Good evening, I'm Scott Head, and we welcome you to this week's episode of VTV News. On our broadcast tonight, the decisions are in, and we have all the details of the new class of 2016. Also, a faculty head of house is leaving his position on the Commons, and a look at the strange creatures that have popped up in Surratt Gallery. But first, we start off tonight with a decision from Vanderbilt Catholic. Vanderbilt Catholic will not re-register as an official student organization for the next academic year, due to the university's enforcement of its non-discrimination policy, which requires registered groups to open leadership positions to all students, regardless of belief. The decision announced Sunday is a significant loss for the university, which is in the process of bringing select student groups into compliance with the policy. Reverend John Sims Baker, chaplain of Vanderbilt Catholic, said, quote, How could we sign such an agreement? Our purpose has always been to share the gospel and proudly to proclaim our Catholic faith. What other reason could there be for a Catholic organization at Vanderbilt? How can we say it is not important that a Catholic lead a Catholic organization?" End quote. Vanderbilt Catholic was not one of the organizations found in non-compliance with the policy upon initial review, but the organization has taken a principled stance on the issue. Dr. Mark Dahlhouse, the current director of the Office of Active Citizenship and Service and lecturer in the History Department, will leave Vanderbilt at the end of this semester to to serve as President and Chief Executive Officer of the Washington Internship Institute located in Washington, D.C. Dr. Dahlhouse is well known on campus for serving as faculty head of East House on the Commons and coordinating student internships for the Vanderbilt Internship Experience in Washington. He says his biggest loss will be missing his students and colleagues here at Vanderbilt and his position starts July 1st. Well, the decisions are in. The Vanderbilt Admissions Department sorted through a pool of 28,340 applications up 14.1% from last year to fill 1,600 first-year slots. According to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, the applicant pool was not only the largest, with this year's acceptance rate dropping to 10.8%, but also the most impressive in the university's history, with the middle 50% ACT scores landing between a 33 and 35, and with over 96% of the students graduating in the top 10% of their class. Take a look at this. Students with Occupy Vanderbilt have been occupying the lawn in front of Kirkland Hall with tents and signs since March 19th. They are protesting the university's investment practices, worker compensation, and community input into university policies. Well, coming off a 20-7 record and a third-place finish in the SECHC tournament, the Vanderbilt club hockey team will play its first game in more than a month Saturday when the Commodores host the Tennessee Ice Falls at Bridgestone Arena. The game will be the second annual I-40 face-off coming off last year's win by a score of 6-2. Vanderbilt has also swept the ice balls this season, winning 6-4 and 7-2 in two games that took place in January. While well, walking through Surratt recently, you might have noticed some strange and even disturbing creatures in the Surratt Art Gallery. With more, here's Ali Musa Tux. This month, the Surratt Art Gallery has installed a new exhibit by Karen Bodnachuk called The Pecking Order. Karen sought out the Surratt Gallery due to the encouragement of a friend. Her art has inspired an interest in crows and led to personal research and appreciation for the intelligence of crows. I started this series around 2007, and it began with my uh, driving a lot in Michigan and driving into Ontario and seeing these scraps of tires on the sides of the road and finding them quite intriguing. And I decided one day to collect some material, had an image in my mind of claws sticking up, and that's essentially where the work came from. Due to controversy over the recent crow removal initiative, students have found this exhibit to be very intriguing. I think just responses in general. A lot of times people walk through the gallery and don't necessarily comment on it, but I think more than any other show we've had, certainly this year, we've had people, I mean, people come up to me and just say, what is going on? What is?" And a lot of people, it's funny because they think it has to do with the the crow situation a few weeks back, <laughs> the crow situation, um, and it's just kind of serendipitous the way it all worked out. So um, it's very timely, but also um, it's cool to have something that provokes discussion and um, really gets students thinking about what's going on around them and um, what, more specifically, what's here in the gallery. Karen explained that her work was not inspired by the crow event on campus, but instead was inspired by the material she found around her home. Thanks, Allie. This past Monday, the Vanderbilt Programming Board hosted a conversation with Mo Rocca in Surratt Cinema. The talk, moderated by Vanderbilt Professor of Sociology Lori Woods, took on a very informal air, beginning with Rocca sharing facts about alpacas 
before talking about the entertainment business and the direction of news media in today's world. One of the reasons I like the, uh, what I do is that I feel like my career has been going back to college and taking all electives, which is pretty awesome, which if I could go back to college, I would do anyway. And getting paid to learn, making a living learning stuff. Um, you know, I, um, Lauren was mentioning what, what, um, that I was uh, doing something on alpacas, on alpaca farming. I, you know, this last, in this last week, I was working simultaneously on the economics of alpaca farming, the 60th birthday of Mr. Potato Head, and the assassination of President James Garfield, which, you know, all at the same time, and I have to try to make sure that I don't confuse the stories. Um, but, uh, Mr. James Garfield kind of did look like Mr. Potato Head. Um, Mo Rocca, at the conclusion of his talk, really wowed the audience. Apparently, Rocca is an amateur gymnastics enthusiast and ended the evening by doing a one-handed cartwheel while holding a glass of water steady. Take a look at this. Wow, pretty cool stuff. Sounds like a very interesting talk. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of VTV News. We thank you for joining us and hope to see you next week for a brand new episode. For all of us here at VTV News, I'm Scott Head. Good night.